Okay, the next item, um, you all had a chance to look through it. Um, it's an extremely professional program that uh, is highly, highly endorsed. And I just saw the Jim Rogers come in. I mentioned something to her. I saw the letter that she had written in response to the request for some assistance and where the health department had, had dedicated uh, uh, some funding toward this, uh, this effort. I have heard of uh, Mr. Justin Luckabee, and that's highly recommended, and I know it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not a free program, but it costs money to get a speaker like this in the area. And I guess from the standpoint, Sue, do you want to speak to it? I've got all the documentation and, and information that you sent in here. Uh, personally, I'm just going to ask the court to allow me to, to commit some funding to that from the General Welfare Fund, because it's going to advocate to all the schools. And Mr. Elder indicated he wanted to put some money into it too. So if you go ahead and. Well, I'll just kind of <coughs> start how we kind of about just what we do. Our church has actually seen them several times at different locations. Uh, but in March, we went, drove to Ashland, Kentucky, um, where he was doing a dateable sex and God tour. And um, we took about 10 of our youth from church and several adults also. And um, you know, I, I really cannot say enough about this program because I walked away as a parent and just thinking on my youth, wishing that, you know, somebody had come to me and said the things that he talked about. Uh, you know, just talking about goal setting and maintaining your standards and not letting anyone uh, set, set the standards for you, where you want to be in your life. And um, our, our youth came away so motivated and excited. And I did bring uh, Houston here with me tonight. Unfortunately, schedule-wise, I couldn't get all of them here. But, uh, you know, we just, we were so excited when we left there. And I just started thinking, what a great program. And if we could get something like that in Marion County. And as you'll notice, uh, we're, we've talked to the schools, and they're excited. The Houston County has been very supportive and just really excited and on board. And it is also looking at, further and not just this one program but how can she extend it through the school year um, to just really make an impact in our community and this is going to be a free event uh, to, to anybody that wants to come and we're just we're really excited about it um, I, I'm going to let Houston because I think to me what the kids had to say about it is more than you know what I had to say about it so I'm going to let Houston kind of tell you a little bit about um, what he learned from it and, uh, Justin Lucas there was a very motivational speaker to children and then he gave us some really good tips on how to live our lives and he told us not to let anybody change the way we felt about anything and uh, he told us all about you never change to God no matter what we do and everybody that we went with really liked it. I think it'd be a good idea to become so everybody else can do. Uh, I'm Jennifer Osborne from the Health Department. Um, the Health Educator there. Um, and the reason the health department got involved is because uh, we do receive some abstinence grant funding. Uh, we provide abstinence education in uh, both of the public middle schools, uh, those are ones that were allowed in at this time, uh, in the sixth and the eighth grade. Um, and, and Justin's program does speak an, an abstinence message along with many other positive messages as well. Um, and I think uh, in the letter that I, I gave to this report, it does give you some of our our teen birth rates, um, the, the latest in 2011 was 46.2, and we're grateful that it's down from 57.8 in 2007, but we have to be persistent uh, to keep it going down because we're still way above the state and the national averages for that, that birth rate. So um, that's one of the, the big reasons why the health department got involved, and um, we did uh, give $2,000 towards the program because I know it is a, an expensive program, but um, unfortunately I haven't seen Mr. Lipidu, um, but he does come highly recommended um, from some peers and co-workers that I have, so I hope you all will consider funding. Uh, well, thanks, Susan, for bringing it to our attention. I know that she has uh, talked for the last, really the last month and a half, we talked about trying to work for other funding and you have approached and gotten sponsorships for a considerable amount of it already. Um, I guess in looking at the sponsors in Marine County Public Schools and uh, the fact that they're going to be presenting at the middle schools and the high school, the message is going to be consistent and uniform and delivered in a valuable way. I think it's worthwhile. I think it's uh, 
conduct the use of, of funds to, to help pay for this. Uh, I would ask the court to allow me to sponsor a thousand dollars for the cost of this from my general welfare funds. And Master Governor, in conversation today, said he would like to contribute five hundred dollars. So I'll go with five hundred. What What is the uh, what's the do you know, uh, yeah, deputy sponsors, do you know what the cost, is this for the, how many trips like this you're doing? Is it uh, for a one time around all the schools or what is it? it he'll be in each school uh, on that Friday. He'll be at each school once that day. So Bud Middle, I think, for starting out in the morning and then to St. Charles and into the high school. So is this so a one time and done or is this a continuing process? Um, for, for as far as he's concerned, he'll be here that one day uh, in the school system, and then on Saturday it's a community-wide event. So, you know, he'll have about an hour in each school, and then they're, you know, we're going to give out invitations while we're there for them to come to the community event on Saturday, which you can go into more in depth. It's going to be like a four-hour conference. Where is so, the community event? Uh, it's going to be 11 Baptists. Okay. Do you have any kind of idea what it's going to cost for him or no, the total cost for the program? 8900 Hey, uh, okay, I saw that somewhere. Yeah, okay. the program to the school is 1950. Uh, for the Saturday conference, it's uh, 5750 and then there's travel costs at, at, at approximately 1270 So we won't know those for sure until all that's uh, is, you know, set in stone. Uh, but yeah, so we're looking at 8970 And we have already um, gotten pledges for almost 6000 of it. So a couple thousand dollars would pretty much get you over yeah, we're $3,020 where we're at right now. Well, Judge, give a thousand. Mr. Little, I get 500. That's three, so I'll give us 200. I'll give two. I'll give two. Two brothers. Is this, will this go to the, uh, or Joe, will no, this go through the school? How's this uh, funded, or how's it? Uh, it's not. It's not a church-based thing. It's a. No, it's it's a motive because we got to stay away from that. But, yes, so. this is this is myself and yeah. other parents um, that come together to work on getting in here, and we, so we talk to the school system. Uh, That's why I wonder who is the uh, ramrod or who who this go to. As, yeah, as, far as, the, as far as a check or anything like that, who? we were just asking that be made out to, to him personally by the okay. ministry. Oh, well, I don't, we're going to get into an issue here, Joe. Help us out here. No, I mean, I think if you do that, I mean, you got to just be careful that it's, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that the, it's, it's not limited to you from a certain denomination or a certain area of the county. Um, and we're basically a, one of the sponsors of the program, and as long as it's, it has to do with, with youth health, Things yeah. like that, which That's what is, yeah. then you can be a co-sponsor for a program like that, and you can make a check directly to him. But again, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be well uh, further non-discriminatory, yeah. uh, non-religious, and, and all of those kinds of things. So, and so the public, everybody will be invited in the county, right? Yes, yes, everybody in the county. And as the next, hopefully, the person next week, we're going to get out letters to all denominations. We're not be discriminatory yeah. in that way. And as I said, when we're at the school, we're going to send out give invitations to each child. So, uh, you know, if anybody is welcome. It's, yeah, regardless of that. Yeah. Affiliation yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do we have a motion and a second in the announced list? Motion. Second. Mr. Wicker. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if y'all allow, uh, I entertain a motion to uh, deviate from the agenda of Richard, but somehow or another, put the uh, Department of Sports Act for executive session. I think they might want to go ahead and do their report before we do that. Uh, problem solved. Okay. Tommy, you want to start? Yeah. Uh, I really don't have anything to add other than in the report other than request request that y'all hire Jimmy Dwayne Gray the third. Motion. Motion. Second. Mr. Wood. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah, if, if we need to do that in right. the board. Uh, I think the land, probably hard. land of transfers or a kind of departmental thing. I mean, if you want to run it through the board, we can. But yeah, no, know. that's fine. I'll that's just fine. transfer it. That way, okay. if something goes wrong, I can. I might have to rearrange things. Okay. Do what you but that, that's my intent, yeah. is what is in my report. It looks like you've got a plan to kind of move things in the direction of the best fit the uh, best productive way. Everybody get all their uh, material picked up from the auction? Yes, sir. It was all gone, I think, by Tuesday evening. There was only three pieces that are mine. I don't have, uh, like I say, we're supposed to start black top on the 21st. we got a three-week window. If the weather permits, we should pretty much finish up in that time. And then I guess now in Hayden talk like they'll be wrapped up till sometime in November after that. So hopefully it'll all work out. I feel like it will. Thank you. Thank you. Keith, you had a good report. I noticed you got the inclusion of the uh, waste time uh, and the grant for the waste time. Do you have anything else you want to add to the report? No. Nothing other than, you know, as the environmental person for the county, I'm certainly in opposition to that pipeline, too. I've done a lot of research on it in the volatile organic compounds, the hazardous air pollutants, and the, uh, the lack of oversight, both on state and federal. Um, I really don't want it to come to this county. Well, if they use them in domain, we're going to put you in charge of watching them, right? Well, I tell you what, if, you know, many years ago, this report did an ordinance in my behest on the land farming of biosolids, and it was called sludge back then. And you all passed an ordinance that we enforced. And if you elect to do that this this time, then we'll certainly do it again. Absolutely. I got a question for you about some uh, comment that was out uh, for 911 purposes. Uh, the Sportsman's Lake Road and Sportsman's Lake Subdivision Road. The road actually goes up to the old lake. It doesn't actually have a name. We call it Sportsman Lake Road. The little short up to the. We we're, not, we're needing to change. I talked to them, and they said we may call it Sportsman's Clubhouse Road or something to distinguish between the two. That's fine. If that's one time we tried to call the main road Calvary's yeah. Lake. Yeah. Nobody. Didn't go over no, big. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, just maybe give it, give it a key, but maybe call it Clubhouse Road or something. Or Club, Sportsman's Club Road, anything. Just so it's a different. From the because they do have the same exact name. Yeah, I know. That really blew dry. Well, we could. We can't have duplicates. We had our address meeting yesterday with people and stuff like that. <coughs> and Joe was there and he sent back a revised copy. I had it printed out there, but I did notice a couple of things that uh, probably need to take word three out of a couple of those on item H number three four and five. Uh, so it's a little bit confusing. We talked about the size of the letters and posting that kind of thing. And, uh, uh, a few minor changes. Joe Joe took notes during our meeting and uh, once we adopt this final version, hopefully by the next meeting we'll get the copies out there by everybody can review them again. But uh, we've got to meet next Wednesday with uh, Map Sync and uh, I guess Mike Robinson and stakeholders for the 911 project. And I guess uh, the addressing really could not finalize until we get this ordinance and establish exactly what we're going to be bound to do. Two things that came out yesterday we are going to have to name some roads and most have been identified. Uh, three or more households on that uh, can't be seen or visible from the, from the main highway for 911 purposes only. We'll not get us for any maintenance or anything like that, but to be CMRS compliant, geospatial audit compliant, we're going to have to do some road naming. Probably. Keep having out of 30, 40, isn't it? I don't know. We're going to compile a list of, uh, of the roads that are currently not named, that need to be named, in each magisterial district. Uh, we kind of decided that the magistrates would be maybe responsible for coming up with names, maybe with the residents, 
And we're going to try to put that together the best we can. It's really difficult. We're going to try to come up with this. Sometime in the next 60 days, we're probably going to need to go ahead and get all those done, forge our final agreements, uh, MOA corrections and things with the, hopefully with the city's cooperation and get ready to get equipment and, and forge the agreement with the election urban Bay County government and probably have uh, you all should have got a letter today because you are invited to the meeting next okay. Wednesday. You probably need to call, put that on a special meeting list because they didn't invite all the matches. We'll get three of them there by the four. Also invite the city council members there for kind of listening in and follow up uh, kind of a, I went to a couple of city council meetings when we were adopting the advisory committee. Gave them a little overview of what we're working toward and bring everybody up where we and where we've yet to go and try to build support for the collaboration between the city and the county on forging our final agreement for the uh, support and the ongoing, uh, I guess, uh, recurring expense. You know, we we kind of got a commitment that the city and county are going to work together on this project and uh, 30 70 splits, what's been kind of agreed upon between uh, conversations we've had at this point. And that's about the way we shake out. We had we had a surcharge. We had a uh, a nine one or a nine one one D on the hard line phone bill. That's about the amount that the city would be contributing anyway. So that's my justification for asking for at least that level of support from the city. And with what we will capture from the CMRS board and the current platform and the cost of which we're going to be operating on about five thousand dollars a month. It's like what a ongoing current expense is going to be. Uh, it's more than affordable with the level of revenues that we bring back into the county to do it with. And, and it will require surcharge. So it looks like that the process is going to you know, continue to develop through the fall and hopefully by December 20th we've got to get the time so that's, the, that's the grant timeline. You basically say it's going to be self-sustaining. Should be. So we excess fees comes in will be set aside for be set updates, aside for up, up mm -hmm. dates, upgrades, software replacement. You know, hopefully we put all that in our MO we've got the city. And, you know, I guess uh, we've kind of talked to Joe and Candace about the possibility of our, our current MOA about dispatch fees. We rather not, my preference is not touch that because it's already there. We don't, don't need to break something if it's already working. But just put another spoke in the wheel and add another uh, addendum to it about the, the new platform we're going to be operating on and the new assignment assessment cost for each party. So that that will be hopefully something that we can adopt in the next couple of months. 